Welcome back to Management Decision Tools. In this section, we're going to explore a really, really interesting intersection between two main topics that we have studied before, namely decision analysis, making decisions with and without probabilities, and linear programming, uh, an optimization tool that we uh, use to try to decide what to do and with what quantities we do with. So what we're going to do today is to try to see how we can use linear programming model to do what decision analysis can do. Namely, uh, in one of the strategies in making decisions, we studied maxi-min decision-making strategy. And maxi-min deals with making decisions without probabilities. So today what we're trying to do is to see if, and of course uh, we will, try to use linear programming, something that is linear, continuous, to do what Maximin does, which is to select the best decision based on maximizing the minimum amount of payoffs per decision. So we have learned both uh, topics of analysis. And what we want to do today is to explore the transformation, all right, using one tool to the other. So as we can see here, Maximin as it is, is a non-linear decision-making uh, procedure or strategy or algorithm in that we try to find the minimum and then we try to find the maximum, right? So in so doing, we are not having some sort of a gradient. We are not having some sort of a linearity to it. It's very uh, jumpy. It's very um, hoppy in, in that sense, in, in that uh, it's, it's basically non-linear, all right? And linear programming models, as its name suggests, must be linear. So the question, the big, big question we want to explore today is, can we use LP to solve for maxi-min problems? Now, why would we do that? LP solvers basically are very well understood. I think you guys have spent a lot of time in trying to uh, learn uh, various aspects of linear programming solvers. They are used extensively in various industries, and so there are, there are many reliable, well-tested software uh, that are available, and there are various support discussion forums about how to formulate uh, uh, LP models in different conditions and different situations. So there's great deal of knowledge in LP, but uh, if we want to really solve for maximin, then what we might have to do is to perhaps learn a programming language, right? And even in, in trying to learn the formulas and the, and the row and column spacing positioning of Excel uh, is also a form of programming, which is definitely feeling, thinking, and uh, uh, contrasting very differently from how we use LP to solve problems. So both look very, very different. Now, if we can transform maxi-mean problems into LP, then we can speak the language of LP and we'll be able to solve maximum kind of problems. And that's, that's kind of great, right? So that is the reason why. We're not talking about speed. We're not talking about what is uh, um, um, the, most, the most efficient way, but we're talking about uh, a very little learning curve, uh, reusing the same tool called LP to solve what is feeling like a new category of problems called maximin. So what we want to do is to sort of uh, uh, think in terms of this example that we have seen before in Maximin, uh, except that I've changed the right bottom uh, payoff from minus 0.5 million to 0.2 million. So uh, what I'm trying to do is to ensure that all the payoffs are all positive or at least non-negative. So they're all positive here. Uh, that, that will kind of uh, uh, reduce certain complexity, but let's see what, how, we, how we go from here. So we start from this table, right? The usual way in which we try to do maximin uh, decision making is to go along the, the decision axis. If I make decision D1, then I will encounter the lowest and I will record that and so on and so forth. And then we, after finishing that part, we try to find the maximum payoff along the min axis. Yeah. And so this is just a quick revision. And so our decision making process is that we'll arrive at uh, the maximin payoff of 0.3 million with the best decision alternative being D1. Yeah. Okay. So that is maxi min decision and payoff. Now, if we think along the lines of linear programming, 
then obviously decision d1 the letter d1 uh, the, the 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 phrase d1 cannot be the objective function value so it remains to be the payoff that that can be spoken about that can be described by lp language in terms of the optimal value is the 0 0.3 million right so how do we do that now first of all is that even making sense because is it that implicitly maxim mean is a kind of problem that cannot be described by lp now if that is true in logic and in mathematics then it will be a futile attempt to even try however it is not the case intrinsically it is possible to describe maxim mean in terms of linear functions how do we why is that why is that even possible so i just kind of want to give you a quick analogy in the sense of um having a uh, two-step just like staircase uh, having a two-step situation and we are on the lower step and our goal is to go to the uh, next top step on the right here so this is the current situation so we want our goal is to go to the right state where ourselves has been lifted to the next higher step yeah okay so we are at the bottom step we want to go to the higher step how can we do that now the maxi mean way is to say okay why don't we have a spring fitted below all right or else we just squat down a little bit and jump right using our legs as propelling power uh, uh, and i draw it as a string uh, spring to jump up and when we jump we tend to be parabolic or else curvy or else uh trajectory kind of thing right we, we definitely don't follow uh gradually in linear pace going up uh we go like extreme acceleration and then deceleration and then, and then finally landing on the top right uh step now, can we do the same using a inclined plane, like a ladder or some sort? Yeah, if we have that, then that will be our tool because earlier on we have the spring as our tool, our legs as our tool, our springing of the leg and jumping up as a tool. But now we will have the help of an inclined uh, staircase or a slope or a plank. And then we sort of gr uh, climb or crawl steadily, linearly, right? Linear speed upwards without having some sort of a jerky kind of movement. and both ways allow us to reach the right top and that's the the end goal right the that's the, in, the intermediate steps can be non-linear versus linear and it can be done so if you can accept that as a means of understanding why it is even possible then things could be easier and here we want to examine the key steps to do that obviously we're not going to have springs and uh, inclined planes but we do that in mathematics so when we transform over to linear uh, description we need uh, essentially three key techniques one is we have to use more decision variables okay S simply having one decision variable is maybe not sufficient we might have to have a few more so try not to be restricted by that number two is to use more constraints now our goal is to transform the pro uh, the problem in maximin fully and uh, honestly, in the sense that we didn't miss out anything, right? So that uh, any maximum solution and payoff is exactly what we will get in linear programming model. So use as many constraints as possible to make that happen. There's no sort of a hard limit, All right? Number three is uh, it, we, we might have to, doesn't mean, so these are just three tools, but we might have to use binary decision variables. Binary decision variables, they are basically decision variables that tick up only zero and one. So to the extent that we don't talk about the in-between fractional values, then zero and one is kind of linear in, in certain simplistic way, right? Uh, uh, sort of like when it goes from zero to one linearly, proportionally, but we don't have those values in between, it is true, though we don't see the, the, the all the intermediate values. So these three key techniques allow us to uh, speak about the nature of maximin and describe it in terms of LP. So how do we do that? Now let's come back to our decision uh, problem in maximin, right? So we are familiar with this part of the diagram. Let's rephrase maximin in terms of LP language. We say we wonder, right? We wonder which decision D1 or D2 or D3 and which state of nature because if we make decision D1, we might encounter low economy, low economy, medium economy, high, S1, S2, S3, right? So which decision shall we make? And then upon which, what state of nature, S1, S2, or S3, will we encounter such that our payoff will be, the, will be maximized in a minimum for each 
uh, decision. So in other words, how can we get the maximum payoff in terms of using decision variables to describe which decision should we make and which state of nature shall we encounter in order to get this 0 0.3. Now, obviously, we know it's 0 0.3, but we pretend we don't know so that uh, it can be generalized to LP problems. So in so describing, we will need essentially nine variables to talk about those what ifs. So we need x1, x2, x2 uh, x1, 1, 1, 1, 2, 1, 3, and they are positioned as seen on the slide here, where if where each of the xij has to be binary. So binary simply means each xij can take up zero or one, no other values, no decimal places. All right. So it is non-negative because it's zero or one. It is also uh, integer because it's zero or one, but it is in addition binary. So it cannot be two, three, four. It has to be just zero and one. Now, why is that useful? Because in so doing, if we try to um, set it to one, because if, for example, x22, after clicking solver, if x22 were to be one, then we know that, oh, the maximum, the maximum mean payoff is 0 0.6. If x13 happens to be one, and of course, all else better be zero, then we know that, um, um, what is this? Decision one and state of nature three will give us the maxi min payoff. So, so that's the idea. Yeah. And uh, what we want to do, however, is that we want to ensure that after choosing each decision, because remember, maxi min has this uh, uh, requirement, this algorithm step, where it says if we choose D1, then we will encounter a minimum amount. Yeah. So when we when the minimum the nature of minimum is that it has to happen once. It has to happen once. So let's just assume all the values are unique first, right? So let, let's get the job done first before we talk about further complexities. So it has to be only at one state of nature where the minimum occurs. So to do that, we want to uh, bind constrain the the uh, the row decision variables the x one 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 two one three such that when they add together it is one so any form of uh, binary addition in this sense add up the binary variables equals to one ensures that we are having mutual exclusivity that means at any point in the optimal solution only one of the xijs uh, in this in this formulation in this constraint will be one that because then it will fulfill equals to one. It cannot be zero zero zero. It cannot be zero one one because that will add up to two and so on. So it cannot be all three turned on, right? So only one and only one, exactly one variable out of one 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 two one three will be turned on. So we do that for each row to ensure that in each row, one of the state of nature will be selected. One and only one. Okay. Now when that is done. Uh, we need to extract the payoff, that means the coefficient. Now, we can do that by sum producting the binary values because one of them will be 1 with the coefficients on top. So when we do that, it will become uh, kind of a selection of the Cijs. So for example, suppose when we solve it, it turns out to be 0, 0, 1. Then because 0 times anything is 0, we end up getting C13 times 1, which is C13. So end up we are selecting C13. So this sum product of binary variables with payoffs with the coefficients automatically allows us to select a particular coefficient along that row. Now, while we can select the particular coefficient, how do we ensure that that particular coefficient is the minimum? You see, we can select the first one, second one, third one, first column, second column, third column. But how does the model know that it is the minimum? So we need to have a way to say that selected coefficient better be minimum. The way we do that is not to think about comparing with everything uh, and, and then finding the minimum. What we try to do is to constrain this unknown value called minimum. So we want to say something like the chosen payoff, that means the chosen coefficient along the row, must be less than each of the coefficients. Isn't it? Let's look at the coefficient.